Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Breaking Free Show, and my name is Marilyn Shannon, and I'm so happy to have you all here today, and I want to say uh, hello to Amnon. Shout out. Hello. How are you? Shout. Shout out. How are you? Fine. How are you? I'm good, thanks. And your week? My, oh, you I got too. it. I got it in. I got it in. My week has been fine so far. Good. Good. Yeah. And I hope everybody's week out there is good, fine, nice, great, everything, and plus. And I'm really happy to have you all here. You know, every week we um, we really pride ourselves on introducing uh, really cool people with some really cool stories uh, to all of you because, I mean, that's where the connection is. The connection is in those great stories. And the more we um, understand it, the more we connect with them, the, the more we hear them, the easier our life becomes and the easier it is to break free and we want to make it as easy as possible for each and every one of us to taste and sample life and all the freedoms that can come along with it so i'm really happy to have everybody here i want to remind you as we get started that you are more than welcome at any point in time to call in 919-518-9773 if you have a question for me or if you have a question from my very special guest, or you can uh, Skype in with us to computers, that's plural, 2K voice, the number two, the letter K, and then voice. So you might be somewhere, you can't phone in, but you can Skype, do that, because you know th these shows, this is a community, and we are so delighted to have the opportunity for people to reach out and share their life with us, share your journey with us, uh, comment, ask a question, anything that could make it easier for you. And so um, our guest today has a really, um, is really special. And I want to thank Becky Curran, who was a guest on our show about a month or so ago. Um, and she had suggested that I reach out to Teal, Shara, to be a guest on our show, which I did. And she's really something. Um, at the age, I think, of 14, she was in a car and... Um, broke her back in an automobile accident and has been in a wheelchair. And that's, that's, the, that's part of the story. That's the, maybe the impetus for this beautiful woman to do what she's doing. But, you know, that's what got her there. But in 2004, whilst living in Atlanta, she was cast in a Hollywood HBO film, an Emmy Award win, with Emmy Award, with an Emmy Award winning film called Warm Springs starring Kenneth Branagh, Cynthia Nixon, and Kathy Bates. She also appeared on stage with Dustin Hoffman. She has produced and starred in the Pulitzer Prize winning play Proof, and she was the first person with a disability to play the lead role of Catherine. And in 2012, she created My Gimpy Life, an online comedy series that loosely is based on the story of her life. And then in 2013, she won an award as best female comedy, uh, as the best female comedy performance. She really is amazing. She surfs, she reads, she drinks wine, and she likes to hang out with her German shepherd. And she is now in another um, online series called The Guild, which is also extremely interesting. So if you haven't already had the opportunity to watch these videos, you really should. Um, they're really interesting. It shows a, a phenomenal character, um, and it shows a lot of um, spunk and um, creativity. So I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to introduce my guest, Teal. Teal, welcome. Hi. Hey. Thank oh. you for having me on, and thank you, Becky. <laughs> yeah, we're hopefully, hopefully Becky's listening. So I Teal, know. So, Teal, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. So you, um, you, so you had the accident at 14, right? Yes. And so, and that was tragic. Yes. Yeah, it's the last thing that you ever think uh, is going to happen to you. It's like a split second. Your, your life drastically changes. And so how long, so you were, I mean, you broke your back. I broke my back, yeah. So how long were you in this, I mean, where were you at that point in your, in your mind, I guess, and in your heart at that point, and how long did it take you to kind of come out and be who you are? 
Yeah, um, I mean, right after the accident, obviously, I'm going through multiple surgeries. You're kind of, you're heavily medicated out of it most of the time. Um, once I was um, healed well enough, um, I left the hospital and I was sent to a wonderful rehabilitation center in Atlanta, Georgia called Shepherd Center. And I think that really influenced um, my, my, my journey after my accident. The rehabilitation center is one of the best in the country, in the world. Uh, there were a lot of other teenagers there with spinal cord injuries, so you definitely, it made you feel less alone. They had a great peer support system where they would have uh, people who had been injured like maybe a couple years ago plus come and visit you and tell you about how, you know what they're doing now. And I remember in particular lately, this one girl coming to visit me, she was a couple years older, she was in a wheelchair, and she was a cheerleader in high school. She was cheerleading from her wheelchair. She was driving a convertible. She had a boyfriend. She was about to go to college. And I saw her, and I was like, wow, she's really cool and has a wonderful life. I can be like her. So I think that really helped seeing other people with disabilities who were leading these great lives and realizing that it's, it's not, you know, awful and it can be uh, it can be good. So I think that set me on the right path. And it's just like with anything, it takes time, you know. There's right. a lot of adjusting, but um, I was lucky. I have a wonderful family, wonderful friends, uh, great support system. So I think I just tried to focus on being thankful for what I had and knowing that it could have been a lot worse and just trying to see the, the positive side of things. You know, when, while you were speaking, I had this, this thing just came across me, and it, it just said, you know, I guess, and it's easy for me to say on some level because I'm not where you are, but from what I gather from what you just said, it's another, it's ju it is just another way to live. Yes. Right? Yeah, and I mean, I have people tell me, like, I don't know if I could go through what you did and have such a good attitude, and I'm like, no, you probably could. Like, it's, we don't realize like how resilient we are and until I think we're faced with situations mm -hmm. like that. And I think we surprise ourselves mm -hmm. how easily we can adapt and get through situations. So were you surprised at how well you could do it? Or did you always have this type of personality, this type of energy? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I, I, I was. I was always very positive, outgoing, driven. Um, my parents always taught me to be very, I think, independent. And so definitely I had a, a, a really good foundation. So when this did happen, um, mm -hmm. I think it was, you know, I already had that foundation. So I, I, it, it, I, it made it, I guess, easier. You know, a lot of the, several people on the chat are just saying how much they've enjoyed your videos and how entertaining they are. I just want you to know. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So <laughs> it means a lot. It does mean a lot. It means it's it, the message. I mean, because if you haven't seen her videos, you should. Because there is definitely this under, I, I think, a message, an underlying current of information that is done in a way that it's really breathtaking on how you um, are able to. Um, capture certain, it, it, I mean, certain things and get it across in such a way that it's kind of like, oh, yeah, but of course. Yeah. You know? So I want to ask you, going, going back, and then we're going to come forward. Um, so did you always want to be an actress? Did you always want to write? Did you always want to be a star? So I, I grew up in a small town called Lenore City, which is outside of Knoxville, and acting wasn't even available to me there. Like, it wasn't even an option. So I did like to perform, though, because I was a cheerleader. So that says something. And it wasn't until I went to college at Oglethorpe University in Atlanta. I had to take a theater class as part of my communications major, and I fell in love with it. I had a wonderful professor, Troy Dwyer, who was so encouraging, could care less that I was in a wheelchair. He cast me in my first play, playing a character who wasn't even disabled and I from that point forward I was 
either acting on stage or working behind the scenes, stage managing, working box office. And during that time in Atlanta, I also started dancing with a physically integrated dance company called Full Radius Dance, which combines both dancers with and without disabilities. So I was like, I feel like a big part of my college experience was, you know, dancing with Full Radius. And then I just became so involved in our theater department at college and, um, I feel like that all just felt right when I started performing. I was like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It, I, I'm not just uh, turned around and said, well, you could play Hillary Clinton. And you're <laughs> so right. Do you know that? It's so funny because I have a video on YouTube and somebody said, <laughs> um, she looks like Hillary Clinton. And I had really short hair in it. In it. Um, and that's funny that uh, you just said that. I don't, yeah. Yeah, he just said I that. I guess that's a compliment. Yeah, it's a I great like compliment. Clinton. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, it's a great compliment. Okay. So, um, so did you ever do stand, I mean, st- stand-up comedy I mean, in a comedy club? No, I I have not ever done stand up. I've thought about taking a stand up class, but it scares me. It's, uh, I mean, I think the big thing is like I'm so I'm not a writer. Uh, we have a writer from I Give Be Life. His name's Gabe Yor. He's my partner, and he writes and produces along with me. And to be a stand up, I think you have to be uh, obviously more of a writer and. Um, and it's a different lifestyle. It's a hard lifestyle. You're on the road a lot. You're performing in these little clubs with maybe a small audience, a, a tough audience. Uh, it's. I have a lot of respect for stand-ups. And maybe one day I'll take a class. But mm. it's, yeah, I don't know. Something about it scares me. Because I'm, I'm used to working with scripted material. I'm used to being, you know, a script and I have it. And mm-hmm. I can, you know work off of it and I think there's something safe about that well he's brilliant because I mean so do you so in the process of working with my gimpy life do you tell him the things that have gone because it's about the things that have gone on I mean when I watched one today yeah you're getting in the car and all of a sudden your wheelchair just like rolled down Rolling the street. Down the hill. I mean I would be cursing yeah oh it ha- it's happened but you don't I mean I think you're just in that moment you're so focused on oh my gosh, I've got to get my wheelchair. So what we're talking about, there's a, the opening scene of the first episode of My Gimpy Life. Um, um, it shows me like going throughout my daily routine and then I get in my car and um, um, actually, no, I just put my wheelchair out of my car and my phone, yeah. I think uh, I get a text and I look over at my phone and my wheelchair is like rolling all the way down this massive hill. Uh-huh. And um, so that's happened to me a couple of times and I've either had to like flag down a stranger and be like, can you go grab my wheelchair for me? Or I've actually like driven my car like down to the chair and tried to like, you know. Um, oh, yeah. I never even, you know something? I up. never, I sat there and I said, I wonder what she would do. And I never for one second thought you would drive your car down. How silly. Yeah. I mean, well, you're kind of like, how else do I get there? Yeah, you know, really? I can't obviously get out of my car and walk down to it. Right. I'm not necessarily going to crawl. That would be a little much. So right. it's like, yeah, you kind of, you go in like, it's like, you know, you just start thinking, okay, what do I do? Like you have to problem solve really quickly. And so you do, you just, and I think being in a wheelchair has taught me I'm such a problem solver. I'm like. You know, there's the stairs. How am I going to get in? Where's the bathroom? Is it accessible? Is there a curb cut? Like, you're constantly, your mind is always paying attention to um, accessibility and how, how you get around. Mm. Yeah, you really must be, you must be really good at creative problem solving. You have to. <laughs> it forces you to. It be forces good at you. It. And flexible and spontaneous. And, yeah. You have to become accommodating, flexible, and um, you have to, at a point, just be easygoing and have a sense of humor or you'll go crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I was watching that. And I mean, even when your car broke down and you had to take a bus and it was raining. I oh, mean, yeah. The Liberty Mutual commercial. Yeah, man. I, yeah. That's a great commercial. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great commercial. That's something else. If you have haven't seen it yet, you really should um, check it out. It's great. And let me also say, if you are not if you, but any of you that are listening now, if you're not, you know, on the chat, you might like to see what some people are writing about, and you know, just take part in it. You're welcome to put your name down there on that line to the right, and then just click kind of like send or okay, 
and you'll be part of the chat and part of you know seeing what other people are communicating and we'd love to have you there so what is the funniest 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 thing that's happened to you that you oh, just oh. laughed about or you just knew it was so funny oh my goodness that's a good question i wish i had thought about this because now i'm like my mind's going blank okay so we'll come back to it then yeah let's come okay, back okay let's come I back feel like to something it something funny has happened recently and now well, I'm forgetting. <laughs> okay, well, I'm sure there's, I mean, and maybe every day there are things happening that just become so, like, normal. Well, a lot of times they're not funny in the, situ- in the moment. Right. And then when you look okay, back, well, that's a good point, okay, though. That was pretty funny, but in the moment it was kind of. But that's a very yeah. good point, though. It, yeah. I think for any one of us, I mean, I hope, you know, listen to what she just said. In the moment, it may not look funny. But if you can go, but not just if, but when you go back and you can look at it and you can see the humor in it. Yeah. You know, that does change how we view life, wouldn't you say? Definitely. I mean, the fact that you do this show based on humor, how has that changed how you live your life? Well, definitely I now, as I go throughout my day, I'm always like, you know, if anything happens to me, to me, it's now material. So I, uh, I kind of like, so it's a different perspective now. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, I was leaving the grocery store several months ago and this lady ran up to me very excited and asked me if she could pray for me. And, you know, I, I, it, I really didn't want her to pray for me, but I was thinking, oh, this may be good material someday for Gimpy Life. So I said yes. So I let her in the parking lot, put her hand on my head, and do this whole prayer. She read, I guess, some things from the Bible. She did this whole thing, and then she was done. She's like, thank you so much. Have a great day. And then she ran off. And it was so awkward because I'm sitting there with my groceries in my lap, my hands like on my car, car door about to get in my car. And this whole thing just happened in this parking lot. But to me, I was kind of like, I wanted to see what would happen. So I feel like that's how I live my day now. I'm kind of like, okay, let's just say yes and see what happens. <laughs> because, right. you know, maybe it will be a story I can share sometime. Well, you know what? It kind of makes it easier to live our lives that way. Yeah. You know? I think I've learned to not always take things pers- so personally. Because a lot of times when things happen, it's not about me. It's about maybe that other person or what's going on in their life. So I try not to get so upset about things or I try to just be zen about it and let it brush off because it does me no good to get upset about things and to take it personally. Well, I think it's great that you've created an outlet to be able to have to be able to savor this material that's part of your life and put it into something that can really enhance your life, but so much for somebody else. Definitely. It's been, I think one of the most rewarding things from releasing my Gimpy Life has been the feedback I've gotten from the disabled community. People saying, thank you so much for sharing, you know, experiences from our lives because I can identify with it. And it's so nice to see somebody that I can identify with and know that I'm not alone, that somebody else goes through that. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I'm, I guess I'm not the only one whose car, uh, I mean, whose wheelchair has rolled away from my car. There are a lot of people who said, Oh my gosh, that's happened to me too. So it's cool to know. Okay. I'm not alone. No, 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 you're not. And what I love so much about you, is that um, you're you're not just supporting people in you know with a disability, but you know what you're saying broadens the the, the horizon for all of us. I I, I want to talk about your mission because I think when I when I read about you know and may, this may not be your mis- mission. This is just something I picked up. So you can tell me what your mission is because as an advocate, one of the things that you you know you want to talk about is I don't want to just take a role that somebody created for somebody that has a disability, I want to be able to get any role that's, you know, for a, a woman my age, you know, a white girl, you know, that kind of thing, yeah. not just for somebody in a wheelchair. So is that your mission as an advocate? 
Definitely. I, I, I think people with disabilities are underrepresented in TV and film, and it's that's very unfortunate because we're out there in the real world living, you know, lives. We're teachers, we're mothers, we're lawyers, we're doctors, and you don't see enough of that. And definitely, I don't audition very much, and... I'd like to go out for roles that aren't just the girl in the wheelchair. Right. Because there's no reason I can't play those other roles because, you know, those right. are things that I could be in real life. Yeah, I think it's really, um, I love the fact, I love talking to you about this because I so would love to bridge the great divide mm -hmm. into so, in, in so many ways. I'd like to just kind of cover up all these divides it would be nice to one day not even have to talk about it absolutely because it would just it would be just you know right, right. it just would be right. it you would right. it wouldn't even be an issue right exactly and you know it's interesting because when i read that i went oh yeah why couldn't she play all these roles i mean i had never even thought about it so the thing about so much of this stuff is some of the most simplest things and the things that are just so yeah but of course I don't even think about myself. Yeah. And just reading that little bit in your profile that you wrote that, it was like, yeah, why couldn't she just play any role? I mean, yeah. she is just any person. Well, in my day-to-day -day <laughs> life, we don't, I don't talk about my wheelchair. It's not, you know, the, the, the theme of the day. So, you know, I'm just, you know, out living my life, doing my job like any other person. So, and right. I think there's something powerful about people just seeing that on TV and in film that it, that it doesn't, we're so much more than our disability. Right. And, um, I think there's a lot to be said for just a character, say a teacher in a wheelchair on a TV show. Right. And she's just a teacher and she's teaching her kids and she has issues like any other teacher and whatever else the storyline is, but it doesn't have to be like, you know, absolutely. She's the inspirational, you know, teacher in the wheelchair that has overcome so much and she's trying to find a cure so she can walk again. You know, it's like, it becomes so false. So like they say in school now, show me the palm of your hands. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> what is that? No, I don't know that. Tell me, what is that? This is like a private joke, everybody, because I don't know. What do you mean? What do you mean, show me? It's in one of her videos. Oh, you saw it? Oh, okay. I didn't know. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's one. Okay. Where my palms got dirty from pushing down the dirty uh -uh. alley. That happened to me in real life. Okay, so tell me what happened, because I missed that one. So in episode one, um, so what happened in real life was I had an audition for a commercial, and the casting director's office was not accessible. It was like a huge flight of stairs to go oh, I, to Okay, office. I saw that. Okay. So she said, meet me in the yeah, alley, alley behind yeah, okay. my uh, casting office. So right. I did, and I didn't realize as I was rolling down the alley, my hands got filthy. And in the commercial, at the end, you have to do like this hand gesture. And so when I did that hand gesture, my hand was like covered in black. And the casting director like looked at it funny, and then I was like, oh no. It was embar It was just embarrassing. But mm -hmm. in real life, though, and as in the uh, show, I did end up booking the commercial. So usually I feel like the worst auditions are the ones you book. Well, that's probably uh, a truism. <laughs> I don't know, I like that's life. <laughs> yeah, for a lot of women. When I'm at my worst is when... You know, I might get a, you know, a client or when I'm not yeah. as connected at the shows turn out this way or when my hair yeah, is not. I feel like it's, yeah. you're real in that moment. I yeah. feel like there was something happened when my hand was there. You know, like there was a really real moment of embarrassment and uh, something that happens when you mess up. Absolutely. Um, so, so I have a couple of things that people want to know about. So what was the greatest advice you ever got? Is there something that sticks out in your mind as some advice that somebody's given you about whatever, whether it's about being an actress, whether it was about being on, you know, having these shows, whether it's about being in a wheelchair, whether it's about being an advocate, anything? Wow. That's a good question. Um... <laughs> well, I feel like the biggest thing after my accident, and I don't know if somebody told me this or what, but it was me realizing that 
it could always be a lot worse and to be thankful for what you have was a good one. And I sometimes have to go back to that when I'm feeling really like frustrated about something or upset about something. It's to kind of like write down all the good things that have happened and what you're thankful for. And cause it's so easy just to focus on all the little bad things. And so that was a good thing. And as an actress, Things got a lot better for me when I started creating my own opportunities. As an actor, you feel like you're waiting a lot and you feel like you don't have control. And when you realize that you do have control and you can start creating your own things, like I started producing theater first, and then that, of course, gave me a great foundation for producing my Gimpy Life. Um, I think it's like that creating, creating your own opportunities and not just waiting for them to happen to you was something else. Um, Felicia Day, who's the creator of the guild. I was very much influenced by watching her do that and seeing her kind of pave her own way. And that really influenced me to create my Gimpy life. Well, I think that that, whether that's advice that somebody else gave you or that's advice that you're giving all of us, I think that's great advice because too many times and you could just sit back and go you know what this is just too difficult for me I just can't do this I'm not getting you know and and let it just rock your world and you know hurt your self-esteem and think you know what the heck I don't I can't be out there but the fact that you um, are living that and doing that everybody should just take that bit of advice and yeah you know jump on whatever jump on whatever stick you want to jump on to yeah. accomplish, you know, really, to accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. Absolutely. And not wait for anybody else. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think, too, sometimes not being so focused on the end goal. I mean, obviously, you need to have a goal in mind. But to enjoy the journey and enjoy the try to try to enjoy the obstacles of the journey because you're going to have them. And mm-hmm. um, Absolutely. yeah, I think that was something that I had to learn as well. So. Uh, I have several questions here. I'm just going to go start asking you one by one. Do you know any of the push girls? I do. I know, I think I know all of the push girls. Yeah. And from, yeah, and they all live in LA. So. All right. There you go. That's one. Here's another one. Can, what is your beauty r- routine? Because uh, there's some comments about how gorgeous you are and how beautiful your skin is. Oh, they, oh that's nice. Um, I think, I mean, I try to say, obviously, water is good, hydration, sleep. I um, I do have a lady I see for, like, facials and stuff. Um, so that helps. Um, yeah. Okay, good. Me too. Thank you. I know. <laughs> Me too. Me too. And I'm not, of yeah, course. Yeah, I mean, I do have to work at it because I have, I will say, in the past had problems with, like, acne. So I have used Proactive before, which has helped. And then I use like a Retin-A at night, which helps because I have had, I'm not somebody who naturally has good skin. Like I literally have to work, um, work for it. Um, well, it's all part of life too, I guess, it is you part know, of life. it's all part of life. Okay. So they're begging me, begging me. I don't know how much they're begging me or what they're going to pay for this, but they're begging me to ask you to sing. Oh, to sing? Yeah, can you do it? I don't sing. I'm a really bad singer. Well, the drunk. Okay, this is it. Ask her to sing for us like she did in the drunk kickstart Kickstarter update. Uh, what did I say? Yeah. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I mean, I'm really not a good singer at all. I just, I mean, but that was, yeah. What? I think I did that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it, it, and you know what? It doesn't even matter because it's whatever you do, it, it you come through whatever it is. So yeah. people are going to buy, watch, be connected to you no matter what you do. Yeah. It won't matter. It yeah. It, it just it won't. If you if you couldn't draw, and you decided to become an artist and draw. People will buy it if it's a stick figure. I guess, my stick figure. Yeah, it won't matter. <laughs> I mean, there's just it just won't matter. Um, 
let me see. Let me. There was another. Oh, somebody said. Oh, you look like a young Meryl Streep. Suzanne oh, says. Oh, that's yeah. the biggest compliment. I love Meryl Streep. I would love to be act with her in a movie. Uh huh. So, so do you go after? Let's say you you you're creating all of these um, venues. Now, do you actually go to producers? Do you go to actors, actresses, and say, "Hey, here I am. You know, I'd love to work with you." Um. Y- y- yes, as uh, you if you can get to them in an appropriate way that's professional and not creepy, um, then for sure. But with Gimpy Life, for example, uh, Gabe, your and I, and we just brought on a guy who's helping us with uh, marketing and social media. Like we spend time researching like news outlets and blogs and whoever producers and think of ways, like how can we get our show to them? And whether it just be fun, you know, spamming them through email or whatever we, we, you do. I mean, I think that's the hardest part of creating an online series is marketing it like, you know, discoverability. There's so much on the internet and how do you let people know that you exist is the tough thing. Cause we don't have a budget like a TV show does who they have millions of dollars to put, you know, billboards you know, their images on the sides of buses, commercials. Like, we don't have all that. Our marketing is all grassroots. It's word of mouth. It's, you know, through different outlets on the Internet. So is it, so ultimately, what is it that you want to accomplish? I mean, how, is it viewership on those shows? I mean, what? I would, yeah, I feel like our numbers, though, I'm very, obviously very proud of the show and the audience we have. I feel like our numbers should be a lot higher. And I feel like we should be reaching more people. Um, so that's something that we continuously work on. Um, for me, I would hope the show would lead to more acting work in TV and film. And, you know, even I would love for someone to see it and be like, oh, this would be cool to develop this show into a TV show. Mm-hmm. And to go with that, you know, to have that happen would, would be great. Yeah, I, you know, it's interesting because you, you can do mul- multiple kinds of things. You know, you can mm-hmm. be very funny, and you, then you, can, you have that other serious side. Uh, yeah. And you do come, and you have a, a you know, you, and your life is that way. You know, your life has all of those elements, in, and pr- all of those elements in it, is, as all of us do, but, you know. Yeah. So you, but you've put it out there. I mean, I like to consider myself funny, too, and I like. Yeah. You know, I like to have, you know, uh, material, I call things, you know, that I can either use in my coaching practice from my personal experience or, you know, just even here. I mean, my personal material is very important to me because it's where my lessons are. And then, you know, it's kind of like the universe clopping me on the head saying, okay, here's something for you. Like the other day, um, I purpose, um, I just broke, just coming off of breaking my foot. So oh, I've no. been very careful with walking. I mean, very careful with cracks in the ground and all of those things. And I'm walking down the steps the other day, and I realized I was wearing these flip-flops that have no traction. So I was conscious about walking down the steps. And what happened? As soon as I'm thinking about it, what do you think happened? I, my foot, my, both my feet slipped out from under, and I'm popping down the steps on my, oh, you know what, my ass. Yeah. And, I'm like, oh, well, and it was so fast. I didn't have time to pray. <laughs> you yeah. know, I couldn't say like, oh, please, de- please, dear God, do not break my foot again. You know, I mean, and I just had to get there and I went in slow motion. And I was like, maybe that's good, too, because then I really didn't. Have, but it's all part of, you know, our material. Yeah, part of life. It's part of life. So uh, Chris on our chat has a question. And yes. her question is, uh, she's growing a friendship. With and it's going so fast with a person who is in a wheelchair. Typically, I kneel down so I can look her in the eye rather than stand above her when we talk. When sitting isn't an option, do you prefer when people stand or kneel next to you during a conversation? I, in all honesty, I don't have a preference. Preference. I'm fine either way. I have people who come right up to me and they'll kneel roll that right down on one knee and get like you know eye level, and that's fine. I have people that will pull up chairs, and then I'm fine if somebody doesn't 
-hmm. you know, if somebody's more comfortable standing and I'm talking to them too, I'll do my, you know, upward neck crane and mm -hmm. look up and that's fine too. I have no preference. I feel like it varies um, from person to person and it's kind of like, what are they comfortable doing too? Mm -hmm. That is... So that's interesting. It's what they feel comfortable doing, too. Yeah, because it's not just about me. Like, I hate when everybody just wants to accommodate me because I'm the girl in the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, no, maybe I need to, you know, I'll accommodate you, too. It's a it's mm -hmm. two way street. So so it's really interesting, everyone, because this is how we, again, bridge the divide, because, you know, talking like this, I mean, I certainly would have paid more attention to Teal. But in reality, because she's a human just like I am, she's going to be conscious of what's comfortable for me as well. Mm -hmm. So it, all of this is great to take into consideration. And I once again also want to just say, feel free to call us, 919-518-9773. That's our number here. We'd love to have you call into the studio, or you can Skype in to Computers 2K Voice and uh, give us your um, opinions, what you're going through, anything. Um, the other thing is somebody wants to know your website, how can they, is, do you have a community of people of, of something that people can join? What? Can you tell them? Yeah. I mean, uh, we have a, my Gimpy life Facebook page, which is, we're really active on and we do a good job of communicating with our, um, Facebook fans and we're always updating. So if you just go to Facebook and type in my Gimpy life, that will pull up. Um, I'm also very active on Twitter. I have my personal Twitter, Teal at Teal Share, and then at My Gimpy Life. And I'm really good too at, at interacting with everybody. And if you have any questions or whatnot, um, put them on there. So, yeah, yeah. I feel like those are, are the okay, best, good. best Perfect. ways. You writing any books? I'm not. I, you know, at some point, I think I, I would like to, mm. but I'm not yet. Not yet. Yeah, but, I don't mm. know yet. I could see. I don't know exactly. Uh, like, I have to figure out exactly what I want to say. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You, you're very. It'll come to you. I, but I can yeah. see you writing a book that would be a book for you know, even you know, just a real colorful. I see it maybe you know, maybe like little stories, yeah. like funny like incidents from my life and stories, yeah. kind of throughout. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe, yeah. yeah I, I, would, I, 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 I would like to, though. Yeah, so. I can see you doing that. And there, some of the people on the chat are saying how funny Charles is, too, because he really is funny. Gary Anthony Williams, he works a lot. You've mm -hmm. probably seen him, Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, he was on, um, I'm blanking right now, mm -hmm. but he was, he's been on a ton of shows. Uh, mm -hmm. So you've probably, yeah, seen him before. So now I want to talk to you about dancing. Yes. Because I looked, I saw your picture. And yeah. what a, I mean, it was so beautiful and so graceful and so lovely. So I want to talk to you about that because I know that that is such a freeing um, thing to do. It is. Yeah, you don't really usually associate disability with grace and beauty and arts and, you know, entertainment. So well, I, mean, I think I when can't, I discovered... And, and I have a hard time even just walking without falling. I can't even imagine moving around so beautifully on a wheelchair. Yeah, well, the cool thing about a wheelchair is it glides. So it's like almost like ice skating. Okay. So there is that cool, like, movement that you, you get from the wheels. For me, it was a life-changing experience. I mean, after my accident... It, t it took a while for me to get comfortable with my body and the changes and being seated. And I was so like embarrassed and sh ashamed of it. And just, you, it, it's, it's a difficult adjustment. But then when I started dancing and started moving in my body, moving in my wheelchair, you know, creating art and beauty with it, that it, it, it it really improved my relationship with me, and I definitely became more comfortable. So it uh, transcended. So it transcended. It transcended. I, uh, from what yeah, I'm it's not about the, the disability, and that right. was like one of the biggest compliments we would get from audience members was that you forget that the wheelchair is even there. It's not. It, you, you don't see it. You become an energy. Mm -hmm. You just become a force, and a, and and just you become the movement. Yeah. And so 
did you dance before you acted? Um, I mean, well, growing up, I was a cheerleader, and we would do dance routines, and I did tap and ballet when I was little. I did gymnastics. Mm -hmm. So I did probably my performance background was based more in, I think, yeah, in movement. So, mm -hmm. uh, but when I went to college, I pretty much started dancing and doing theater kind of simultaneous, simultaneously, simultaneously, yeah. So dance for anybody, whether you, you know, and I, whoever you are, I don't even, I don't even want to use the D word anymore, really. But when you, whoever you are, I, you know what? I don't think I'm going to use that D word anymore. <laughs> the D word. I don't think so. <laughs> I think dirty. from this point forward, I, I don't even want to focus on that. Am I wrong? I mean, you what, can do, but whatever I you mean, want. I mean, it just feels like, in, in this moment anyway, having yeah. had this conversation with you, that, I mean, do you, would you say the lady in brown hair with a, no. with a, with a stripe yeah. down her head? I mean, yeah, you wouldn't say either. that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, why would I even say that? You know, it's like I don't. I want to make the world a bigger, fuller, more united um, place. So for me, I wouldn't even. I don't even at this point want to say the D word. But I would think that anybody that would take on dance, anybody, no matter who they are, would feel uh, would transcend their body and become, you know, become this thing of grace and movement and just flow and spirit and more um, in love with their with themselves at a certain point, I would think. I, I agree. But how remarkable and how phenomenal it is to have it available for anybody and particularly even kids. I know that you and I chatted about Dwayne. I don't know if he's um, listening, mm -hmm. but if you are Dwayne... You're more than welcome to give us a call now. This is a great time, 919-518-9773. Um, but it's somebody that I met on Facebook yesterday, but that um, Teal also knows who owns a uh, school, a dance school mm -hmm. for anybody, you know, um, to partake. But he, he does, he is in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And he does spend a lot of time with kids also in chairs. And it is to watch these children's faces. Um, well, I mean, they just, they're having the time of their lives. You know, yeah. they're, they're moving, you know, yep. right? Definitely. It's uh, dance is a universal thing of, you know, everybody. I mean, who doesn't, who's never danced around in their house when nobody's looking, you know, to their favorite song. And I think there's something very therapeutic about dancing and just freeing and, and opening for anybody that, you know, and it's, and it's for anybody. I, I mean, people sometimes will look at me strange and they'll be like, how do you dance? You know, and they don't, they don't get it. And it's like, I just move. What is dance? It's moving. Um, and that's, and it's, it, you, you know, you can do it in any different way. You can just move your head or whatever it is, but, um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, and I think it's important. Yeah. Yeah, I loved um, how it looked, and I just loved, you know, the, the relationship that, I mean, because, you, you, you know, I mean, you know, in television or whatever you, movies, you, you know, when there's a man or woman or any kind of couple, you, you look for the magnetism. You look mm -hmm. for that connection between people, you know, I mean, and I so saw it in that, in the movement, in the picture yeah. You know, just the, I saw that connection, the, the movement in the picture between you and your partner. And yeah. it was just magnificent. And that's what I think so cool about dance is you don't even say, have to say anything. Mm -hmm. It's just visual and it's the music and the, the picture and the, you know, that they're making on the stage and you just take from it, you know, whatever you get from it. And um, so it's free form. Is it free form or was yeah, there well, a it was, thing? I did uh, with full radius. It was modern dance. Okay. So it would be a mix of, you know, ballet, jazz, interpretive dance. Um, I mean, most of the dances we did, though, were all choreographed and everything was set. So so you had um, certain steps to do. Yes. Certain yeah, it would all, we would be in the rehearsal studio three days a week 
um, more leading up to a show, but it was rehearsal. We'd have guest choreographers come in. Um, it was a, and then we'd also go into schools and teach dance to the kids and speak to the kids about integrated dance. Uh, so it was a, you know, it was a professional company that, Mm. you know, the dancers are paid. It's, you know, it's a job. So when they're, when you're doing the movements, is the movements kind of, is it with, is it what your, your, your wheelchair does or. And what your body does, like the movement of your upper Both. body. Like, also... So you may be moving your wheelchair, but moving uh-huh. your body around uh-huh. or moving your arm around or doing whatever. Uh-huh. Um, or, you know, with your partner, like sometimes the partner would kind of do a handstand maybe on my foot plate and with, in some weird pose with their legs and I would be moving them around the stage. Or I would do like a back wheelie over a person and they'd be balancing me. I mean, there's so many different things you can do. Um, so it was a mix of, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I, I want to, we're not done yet, but I want to thank you anyway. Just, I just feel the urge right this minute to thank you <laughs> for being so genuine and so open because, you know, breaking free, it comes in, you know, all different packages. And for yeah. me, one of the things about freedom is learning. Yeah. And getting out of my own way or passing through a judgment or a non-knowing. And, you know, even when you don't mean to, you know, there's some things that I don't mean to. Cause, but I often say if, if I knew better, I would do better. You know, yeah. we only know what we know. So I really appreciate your being so authentic with how you are describing these things and sharing this. Because I, this is a different world than what, I'm, what I know. Mm-hmm. And I want to bring, I, I'm passionate about bringing the worlds together, every, all different worlds, so that there isn't this separation, there's more of this unity. And I thank you for how you're doing it, because you're doing it in such a great way. Thank, thank you. you. Um, I'm going to um, plug in um, my power to my uh, laptop real quick. Say that again, I'm sorry. I'm going to plug in the power to my laptop. Oh, yeah, go quick. right ahead. So, excuse me, guys. So, when you... Can you hear me at the same time? Yeah, we can keep okay. going. I'm just so letting you when guys you, know what I'm doing. When you, when you broke your back, how, yeah. were, how were your legs affected? I have no feeling or use of my legs. So, they're there, and I can, like, tell that they're there. And if, like, you know, I... You know, I, I touch them or put pressure on them or somebody sits on them, then I can, I can tell like there's something there, but I can't like actually feel mm-hmm. um, like, you know, this touch, the, the, you know, mm-hmm. nothing. No, it's just, okay. yeah. And, and do you do like public speaking? I have, I have mm-hmm. uh, spoken at uh, disability conferences I recently went to Queens College in New York and screened uh, season one of My Gimpy Life and then did a talk pack with their students. Mm -hmm. So I have done some. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, uh, you want to have these roles just like anybody else Mm -hmm. and and to help other people do the same. Is that like at this moment, ultimately, however long ultimately is, maybe you don't know what you're going to do a year from now, but ultimately right now. What is it you want to accomplish? Um, I would like to work more as an actress in TV and in film. And I would like to see more people with disabilities doing the same thing. Okay. And, and how, I'm, I'm just curious, and this might be a crazy number. Do you have any idea what the ratio is between people with disabilities and people without a disability? I feel like I heard the number is like 20%. Physical disability. Are yeah, are mm. disabled. There's a lot. I mean, it's a big number. It's huge. Yeah, it's huge. It, it is a huge, uh, it's a huge, a huge portion of our population. Yes. Huge. Um, well, we're going to continue with uh, Teal for the next couple of minutes, but please feel free to call in if you have any, you know, question that you want to ask. Um, remember nine one nine five one eight nine seven seven three computers two K voice. Uh, you can Skype us. Please make friends with us on the Breaking Free Show page on Facebook so that we can keep up with you and you can keep up with us and 
learn who we have on our shows and how to connect and reconnect and just get to know each other. If you have any ideas for shows, you are more than welcome to connect with me personally to Marilyn at uh, reenchantplanetearth.com. And you also want to tune into this channel often because we've got some great shows. For instance, on Sunday morning, Amnon, our fearless leader, producer, has a show on called Computers 2K Now at 9 o'clock in the morning, and they go until they're done. Uh, Carrie Psychic Cafe. Carrie, my very dear friend Carrie, is a phenomenal psychic and medium, and she's on Sundays at 8 p.m., and she's wonderful. And Debbie Brooke is um, on Mondays before this show at 11 o'clock, and Debbie is also a very dear friend. She's the queen of the homeopaths. And then... Lessons of Vietnam, which is a new show, and it's on the second and fourth Wednesdays at night at 7.30 p.m. And let me tell you something, that is a phenomenal show. It is a, a, a well-put-together show, plus it's an amazing audience, and that's a great show. And also, Julie um, Seibert, Reawaken Your Brilliance, Wednesdays at 9 o'clock, and Julie has all kinds of guests on um, to um, help open you up give you opportunities, modalities that maybe you haven't thought about before. And we have a caller. Hello. Hi, everybody. This is Chris calling in. How are you doing, Peel, Marilyn, Omnon? Good, Chris. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm Good. doing well. Peel, I wanted to tell you, I think I hold you personally responsible for keeping me away from my to-do list because I have enjoyed my gimpy life and I have enjoyed everything that I have seen you do. I'm so happy to have discovered you. You have just... <laughs> well, thank you, you so much for saying that. Thank you so. so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, hold on, Chris. What did you just say, Teal? You just... I missed what you just said. Oh, I just said thank you because that means so much to me um, for you to say that. Oh, you're welcome. It, I'm not making it up. <laughs> but um, I wanted to, in reading about your your life and your experiences, I, if I saw this right, you are a recent newlywed. Is is that right? I am. And I wanted to say congratulations. I was curious Thank to know you. how that's all going for you. And um, again, just wanted to say congratulations and thank you so much for putting some light in my days as I've looked over your YouTubes and gotten to know your work. So I'm a big fan. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Well, he's a lucky guy. Oh, <laughs> I, get, I guess I'm lucky. He's actually a really, uh, he's really wonderful, and I consider myself lucky. Too. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> thank you, Chris. Do you have any other questions? You're welcome. No, I don't think so. We've just enjoyed watching, um, watching the show. And, and Teal, I wanted to say thank you also for answering my question about my growing friendship with another woman. And, you know, I've always just not been sure. So I did what I felt felt right, you know, just going down on her level. And that oh, yeah, that yeah. to be okay. Yeah, no, and I mean, I think the thing is, too, I mean, everybody with a disability is different. And may have different preferences too so i find that you know i don't mind when people ask like hey do you mind if i get on my dad on my knee or do you mind if or would you rather me stand i mean i think it's okay to to just you know communicate about it as well mm -hmm. and i think yeah, that was a and that was a really good question um because we don't think about it but i think what it's done by asking that question i mean it it, it, it kind of um gives you the permission, I guess, to, as Teal said, to ask and to be and to be in your heart and come from your heart and do what you think is the right thing in the moment to do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, like everything else. So, right. That's breaking free. Good. Yeah, it's breaking free. So, well, thank you both. I thank will, you, honey. Um, get off the line so you okay. can wrap up the show and say thank what you, you need to say yet. And um, thanks again, Teal. Good luck to you. And thank you. I'll you too. Be watching. Best to you. They'll be watching. You got plenty of. I, I'll be watching. Thank you. See, we have a we have an audience of watchers, listeners, chatters that are very that are devoted and loyal. And That's yeah, they really are. And that when, just shows you the impact, though, that yeah. your show has, and the way people connect to it. Well, thank you. And I guess it's you know when people like you show up, and so. 
you've you've made a lot of friends today. I can promise you. Aww. And they're good. They're good spreader of good news. Yeah. Um, some uh, Susiani wants to know on our chat how you met your husband. We met surfing. Surfing. Good yeah, way. Yeah, people are like when I tell them like what surfing. So there is an organization called Life Rolls On, and they're based in Southern California. And they take people with disabilities out surfing. And Jesse Billar is the guy who founded the organization. And he is a surfer and became a quadriplegic and still continues to surf. So he founded this organization so people with disabilities could get out in the water and, you know, have a good time. So my husband was a volunteer at one of the events. And then I was one of the surfers and we met. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the rest is his, no, not history. The rest is future. The rest is <laughs> in motion. Says, yeah. Day by day. Yeah, yeah Amnon says, and the rest is history. And I said, I don't know. I think the rest is the future. Yeah. So it's terrific. And um, Debbie, Debbie Brooke, who I mentioned earlier, who is um, a homeopath on, has a channel here. She told me, she's watched every one of your um, shows, and she just loved them. So she's another one that's become um, a fan. Thank you. So, We're actually getting ready to film more episodes good. early October. So tell us, so you're filming more episodes of My Gimpy Life? Yes. Yeah, so we raised the money to film more episodes through crowdfunding, mm -hmm. through a Kickstarter campaign. So the only way we were going to be able to film more is, um, is if we raised the money and our fans wanted us to do more and everybody chipped in and we raised enough money and I'm super excited to be doing it. Uh, two guys in particular gave us a large part of part of the money and they'll be our exec producers, Stephen Dangler of Draco Gin and Perfect. Russell Winkler. And Stephen and his company Draco Gin are the ones who sponsored all of season one. So Perfect. the show wouldn't exist without them. So just like to give them a special thanks that, you know, special thanks because you forget that, like, you know, there are a lot of people behind the scenes who have made this show possible and we couldn't do it without. So, and it's phenomenal. And so, because, you know, what this beautiful woman has done is given us an opportunity to laugh at life, which is really a gift. And so, <laughs> and, and in order to keep up with her and her life, I, you know, keep watching her because, and there's no telling what she's going to do next. And there are people on our chat who have been like, like really and truly, how could we've never heard of this woman before? Yeah. So, yeah. So, and you, how do you make money from doing those shows? Is, do you have advertisers, sponsors? We do on okay. our YouTube channel. We'll okay. have advertising and you make some money um, that way. Um, we haven't made, like been able to make a lot of money back. So thankfully we've had sponsors and, donations so we can do the show um you know the hope is that down the line that the show does become mm -hmm. profitable mm -hmm. so anybody can be a sponsor well we did a kickstarter campaign okay. and raised the money but we right. we do have a paypal link that's on our website okay. on the about page mygimpylife.com so people okay. can donate okay through there, um, perfect to keep the show going um, okay so hear that everyone that you can go to her um, shows and you can click on PayPal and you There's can, yeah, and you can donate money and to see this, this is a, this is more than, this is a show, but it's also a project and it's a, it's a phenomenal thing. You can do that. And also we're, you know, we want to mention to you, Carrie mentioned it last night and I thought it was great. You know, we would love to have you sponsor if you are a, a business or you have a message. We have thousands and thousands of watchers and listeners each week. And with all of our shows, so if you're interested, please let me know, Marilyn, at reenchantplanetearth.com. We'd love to have your name and what you do across our screens, and I personally will share it during my show. So if you have an opportunity and you want to um, promote your business, um, your service, your business, whatever it is, let me know. And with that, any final words, Teal? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. You're so cute. Uh, I just know. <laughs> thank you for having me on. And thank you for all the listeners and all the wonderful questions. And um, this has been really fun for me. And, uh, yeah, it's been a really wonderful experience. Well, thank you. And we 
would love to have you come back again and you know i would love to okay, come back good. i mean maybe especially when we get some of our new episodes yes up. it could yes. be fun to yeah talk yeah about those. yeah and i think we should have a contest yeah i think we should have a my uh gumpy life contest like yeah, yeah. I, I will give whatever sign yeah yes. i think we let's talk about that i got this let's feeling yeah i think we should have a contest yeah, I love contests. Yeah, okay, well, let's we talk about it. We do them every once in a while on our Facebook. Okay, yeah, let's do that. I'll send them people like a signed headshot or we can okay. do people hang out or Perfect. Skype call. Perfect, yeah, I think we should. It just feels right that we should have a contest. Yeah. Like what you have, you know, and then we'll, so we'll talk about it. Okay? Sounds good. Perfect. So, everyone, thank you so much for being here today. It's been a pleasure to have you listening and watching us, and we look forward to having you next week. And to all of everybody in the chat, thank you so much for keeping it so active. My head's busy and going up and down like this, but it was great. Got a lot of exercise. So thanks so much. And Teal, once again, you're delightful and uh, you're an angel. So thank you. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye. Bye. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Amnon Nissan, Sundays, 9 a.m. till noon. Carrie's Psychic Cafe with Carrie Silkowski, Sundays, 8 till 9 p.m. Health In with Debbie Brooke, Mondays, 11 a.m. till noon. Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Mondays, 1 till 2 p.m. Lessons of Vietnam with NCVVI members, the second and fourth Wednesday of each month from 7.30 till 8.30 p.m. Reawaken Your Brilliance with Julie Seibert, Wednesdays, 9 till 10 p.m. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com. Sponsored by thatvidblasterguy.com, carolinaapparel.com, and DeltaForce.net.